What is gamma and how should colorists use it in their color grading practice? These are the questions that I want to answer for you today. Gamma is one of these things that we all have an idea of. We've all seen it at work, but probably very few of us have a really simple and clear idea of what is driving the behavior of gamma and when we might want to use it, when we might not want to use it. So let's dive into Resolve and get a clearer concept for what exactly gamma is, how it works, when we should and shouldn't use it. Okay, so here inside of my Resolve project, I'm going to go ahead and wipe out my whole template node graph here because I want to simplify things so that we can get a really good grasp on gamma. So I'm just going to reset all this stuff here for a second. And the naive answer to like, what is gamma? would be like, well, this is gamma. It does this. You know what I mean? Like we've probably all spun this wheel before, whether we are on a control surface like I am right now, or just using our mouse inside of DaVinci Resolve, gamma makes the image darker or brighter. That would be kind of like the most naive definition of what gamma is, right? But gamma is a really, really powerful tool, a really powerful function in the world of color grading. And it's worth having a more detailed understanding of how it actually behaves. So to get that understanding, we're going to use my favorite visual aid, the grayscale ramp. I'm going to go in here to my LUT utility folder and grab this grayscale ramp. And then I'm also going to right click on shot number one here and bypass my color management and flip over to a waveform here in my scopes so that we can get this beautiful line running from zero all the way up to one. And with this line in place, we can evaluate actually what all of our operators do within our primaries if we wanted to, but we're focused on gamma today. So let's take a look on a waveform at what gamma does. Check this out. That's a cool shape, huh? We're making like a rainbow or a hammock, depending on whether we go to the right or to the left. And uh, to put a sort of more uh, verbal definition on what I'm seeing here, what's happening is our, my values are being raised if I go to the right, lowered if I go to the left, but only between zero and one. Notice that zero itself is not changing and one is not changing. And it turns out this behavior has all kinds of useful, interesting application in the world of color grading. One application, a technical application, is when we want to uh, prioritize the transmission of a signal to a monitor and we want to fill in the low end of our available bit depth, it turns out gamma is a really good way of doing that. That's why we talk about something like Rec 709, gamma 24 or gamma 22. That's because that is a display that is set up to respond to an image which has been encoded to something like this. Okay, so that's sort of a technical definition of gamma. But when we're color grading, gamma also has all sorts of interesting applications. One of the first applications of gamma was if you if we now look back at our image here for a second, we're just going to do a, a kind of exercise. I've got my color management bypassed and I'm going to do a simple color space transformation real quick here. We're just going to go directly from our camera color space, which is Arri log C4 out to Rec 709 gamma 24. And back in the good old days of color grading before we had color management and all the fun stuff that we talk about here on the channel, Really, the most common way to color grade, the way, in fact, that I learned how to color grade was to do all of our grading in this realm over here. So we're already in Rec. 709. We don't have a bunch of latitude in our original camera negative to move up or down. We've got a finite color volume. We're basically already in the box of our display. And all we can really do is carefully move things around and make sure that we aren't clipping anything out, make sure that we aren't introducing any problems when we try to expose up or down, when we try to add saturation, when we try to do all the things that we want to do when we're color grading. In this realm in particular, gamma was a vital tool because of that behavior that we just observed, where it is going to pin zero and one and only move things up or down in between. In a display color space like Rec. 709, which we are working in right now, gamma is the closest thing that you are going to get to a photometric exposure adjustment. And if we look as I'm going open or shut with my gamma here, I'm getting not exactly an exposure-esque response, but I'm getting a reasonable response. And especially if I start to pair this with my other adjustments, with my lift and my gain, I can really get some nice looking results out of my image, right? Compare that for a moment to a tool we talk about 
quite a bit more here on the channel. We talk about offset all the time, don't we? We talk about it in our exposure node. We talk about it in our balance node. We talk about offset as like the granddaddy, simplest, and one of the most useful operators that we can use inside of Resolve. But offset in a display space like we are working in right now is a very compromised choice. Check out how quickly and easily my shadows clip out when I spin my offset to the left. Or if I go far enough to the right, how they just go straight through the ceiling of the waveform uh, over there on the right. So offset really has limited utility in a display space. So that's one thing uh, just to note sort of uh, on a history of color grading note that gamma in a display space is especially useful. But the reality is even when we are color grading in a scene space and a color managed workflow like we do here on the channel, if we look at an image like this, gamma can still be an interesting way of really controlling tonality in a delicate fashion. For example, if you want to add just the slightest bit of extra weight into your image, but you really don't want to move your true black shadows, your true zero values, gamma can be a great option for us because that's its, that is the exact nature of the tool, right? So I wouldn't necessarily recommend gamma as your go-to inside of a color managed workflow, but I would absolutely recommend it as a way of making more nuanced, more localized adjustments when uh, you feel like offset isn't quite working for you. That's really the, the next knob that I would reach for, the next ball that I would reach for. And that situation would either be my gain or my gamma. And it really is contextual and it depends on what you're trying to do. But if we look at another application of gamma that is taking advantage of the same premise that we were just talking about of pinning things between zero and one, that means that I can make a color balance if I move things down here like to the southeast, for example, without moving zero or one. So that means my highlights are gonna stay where they were at the beginning, at least to the extent that they were hitting one before, but everything in between zero and one is going to be gently moved. And here's the sort of like artist's take, the creative take, the thing that I maybe want you to take away most from this discussion today. Gamma was the go-to tool or one of the go-to tools for an entire generation of really the first generation of true creative colorists. And it dimensionalized their toolkit in terms of giving them now four total wheels, lift, gamma, gain, and offset, with offset kind of being a distant fourth for reasons that we talked about. But Gamma gave that first generation of creative colorists what they needed to feel their way to a really good result. And that's something that even though we're no longer working in display color spaces, even though we have more sophisticated tools than that generation of colorists did, honestly, than I was shown when I first began color grading, even though we have so much more uh, tools and uh, you know creative uh, bandwidth or, or creative uh, latitude, I should say, available to us in modern color grading, Gamma is a great introduction to the feel side of color grading because every great colorist I've seen, particularly colorists of the generation that I'm referring to, are able to get really, really good results by playing their primaries against each other, whether that's for balance or for tonality. And they're doing that with their lift, their gamma, and their gain. Those are their workhorses. Those are their go-tos. And if you tell any one of those colorists, you can't have gamma, you can only do it with lift and gain, you're really going to be handicapping them because it's through the interaction, the integration, the crosstalk between those three primaries, those three operators, that some of our best colorists, even today, some of the best colorists in the world, that's how they make their magic happen. They make it happen with their lift and their gain, but just as important, maybe most important, with their gamma by controlling and by contouring everything that's happening between zero and one without necessarily moving zero and one. So gamma doesn't always get a lot of play here on the channel, but gamma is a magical operator. It's simple, it's clean, it does something that no other primaries operator can really do. And I think more than anything, it can be a gateway drug into a really, really critical, vital, wonderful part of color grading, which is to have a tactile, feel-based relationship with the adjustments that you are making and to learn to make adjustments by playing tools off of one another as opposed to reaching for a single knob and expecting to get the ideal results without kind of feeling your way through it and uh, creating 
soft interaction or soft overlap between two or more adjustments. So Gamma has got an amazing legacy as a creative tool, as a technical tool as well, because as we talked about at the beginning of this video, Gamma is how we transport images out to our Gamma 2.4 display, and it's how those images end up getting decoded and shown to us. So it has a rich technical as well as a creative tradition. And if you can better understand what exactly it's doing under the hood, you're going to be more empowered and make better choices when it comes to whether you should use gamma, whether you should use lift, whether you should use gain, whether you should use something else. And that's really our goal as colorists is to understand the tools in front of us and to make amazing use of them. As I said, that is really uh, what allowed that first generation of colorists with their very finite set of tools to begin to craft really compelling, artful, cinematic motion images because they knew how to make really awesome use of the tools they did have and they understood what each one of those tools did.